Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. In this episode, we're taking a look at the G.I. Joe 25th Anniversary Comic Pack featuring Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. So this one is, um, I guess unofficially, Battle Damage, Snake Eyes, and uh, what I call Fancy Cape Storm Shadow. But... Um, Pretty cool, very nice. It comes on the standard uh, 25th anniversary comic pack packaging here. You get the cool figures down here, the uh, call outs on the side, and the comic on the back side. Um, side has just the Cobra Ninja call out, G.I. Joe Ninja call out, UPC code. And on the back, we have uh, kind of what's included in the package here. So we do have the traditional 25th anniversary G.I. Joe synopsis. Uh, and then it gives us a little bit of uh, information about the actual included comic. This is actually a new comic written by Larry Hama. Issue number 21B. So this takes place uh, right after issue 21, which was the silent interlude comic. If you... Uh, want to check out the actual figure review for that particular set, check our past videos. We just did one of those not too long ago. We have a couple of the other figure packs included in this wave. Uh, a Bad Day at the Circus with Tomax and Zabont, and A Day in the Life of Springfield with the Crimson Guard and the Cobra Officer. We also get a cool mail-in exclusive offer for Operation Rescue Doc, which we will be getting to at some point very soon so stay tuned for that uh, but let's go ahead and uh, get into this particular package and see what the figures are all about again i have a tendency to uh, rattle on a little bit and these videos sometimes go a little bit long so my goal today is to not quite be so long-winded with it <laughs> and to try to get this under um I don't know, I'm gonna aim for 20 minutes and uh, we'll see how well that goes. Uh, usually they go 20 to 30 minutes or something like that. So <clears throat> anyways, uh, we got the cut, we got the uh, figures in the package here. We have the cool comic that slides out and we have our insert. Very cool, we'll throw the uh, packaging off to the side now. Uh, we're going to start here with the comic itself. Adjust the things a little bit here. Uh, again, this is a new comic specifically for this set. Uh, cool little advertisement for the uh, 25th anniversary line there. Nice looking cover. Battle damage stake eyes. And he doesn't have his uh, crazy fancy cape here, but... Uh, there's Storm Shadow. <laughs> uh, we'll flip through this thing real quick. Gives us a synopsis of what happened in previous issues. And we got some new art here. Again, this one is also completely silent. And uh, it honestly looks a little bit like Flashback stuff, uh, so not a whole lot of new stuff here going on. There's the Red Ninjas. So yeah, I'm not really sure this is actually a flashback or not, but uh, interesting anyway. So there's the comic. We'll toss that to the side and get into the rest of this. Um, let's go with the uh, inserts here. Comes in a standard uh, poly bag here with a little piece of tape. So let's uh, slice that tape off, more or less, <laughs> and see what we got here. Got to make sure we get that little red sticker there for our mail-in rebates. So we do have the uh, little red sticker there for the uh, proof of purchase to add to our redemption certificate for Operation rescue dock very cool looking i do miss these 
Very nice though. Very cool. So uh, there is that thing. You basically did uh, six of these uh, packages with the little sticker and you got to mail that in for um, Doc. So uh, we get two of our file cards here. One for Snake Eyes, one for Storm Shadow. They have the nice black backing on them. Uh, if I can get this up here, y'all can uh, pause this to read through the bio if you want to. Very cool for snake eyes. Throw that to the side. And here is uh, Storm Shadow. Pretty cool. Pretty standard stuff here. Uh, we also get this cool little insert thing for the, uh, the packaging here, which isn't really useful to anything. So we're going to toss that away. But I do kind of like the art on it, so, yeah, whatever. And now we got the actual figures. So let's go ahead and get them off their little bubble here, and then we'll uh, zoom in and take a look at them individually. And, yeah. So bear with me while I get these out. Make a little racket here. Oh, that one just jumped right out of there. So we have our Snake Eyes uh, Battle Stand. There is the Storm Shadow Battle Stand. I don't particularly see any tape holding anything down on these, so uh, that is a change. Usually they take the, the, the heck out of these things, so let's go ahead and I yank Snake Eyes out first. Very cool looking. We got our accessory pack here for Storm Shadow. Nice cool bow and arrow for Storm Shadow. And you'll notice here that uh, the cape is kind of comes out the back here, so you just kind of have to fold that up a little bit to get it to come out. And his one leg here is uh, sticking through the packaging down here. Come out. There we go. Comes out pretty easily. Nice looking little figure. Packaging is done. We'll toss that to the side and let's zoom, zoom, zoom all the way in here. Where are we going to go with it? And just kind of level this thing up just a hair. Slide that over. And that should do for what we're needing right now. All right, so uh, let's go and start, I guess, with uh, Snake Eyes here. Uh, well, actually, just look at both of these uh, battle stands here. We get the traditional G.I. Joe Rays logo. We have a single foot peg on the top there. Codename Snake Eyes, 2007 copyright. Very cool. Pretty standard stuff. Storm Shadow has the Raised Cobra logo and a single foot peg as well. Codename Storm Shadow, 2007 copyright. So, very nice. I do like the figure stands. Moving on to the figures themselves, uh, accessory-wise. Um, so, if you uh, recently watched um, the last video I put out, I think was the uh, the Silent Interlude comic pack with Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Uh, so, this figure should look very very similar. Um, it has the exact same accessories. So we do have the single uh, combat knife here for snake eyes. Not a lot of detail work going on. A little bit on the hilt. Got a little bit of flashing on that that I'll have to pull off at some point. Nice metal blade. He does have a sheath on his uh, side of his leg here for that knife to fit into. Slides in there just like that. Very nice, very secure. Don't have to risk it falling out and getting lost too badly, so that is nice. Uh, we also get his cool Uzi. Let's get that out of his hand. Uh, no crazy rubber bands this time around. Um, but if you'll notice real close here, uh, his hand is actually molded shut for some reason. I don't know if that is just because the plastic got done that way or if 
they didn't clean it up or what, but it's definitely uh, molded into that grip there. So uh, that is interesting. Uh, the actual Uzi itself, pretty standard weapon here. Some nice details. Raise this up just a hair. A lot more detail than I actually thought here. Uh, we got some interesting stuff on this uh, grip at the top. You see all the bolts and everything. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So there is the little Uzi thing. Uh, he also has his uh, weapon satchel here. There's a stray thing there. Um, <laughs> Uh, so this one is a little different than the last one we got uh, in that there's actually got the Cobra logo on it, which is um, very odd, but uh, yeah, but same basic satchel we've seen in previous releases. Nice detail on the strap. Cool looking buckle there. Some nice texture on the actual bag itself and that cool cobra logo so yeah that's pretty awesome there yeah interesting uh his other accessory is a pistol on his side it is in this nice sheath here very cool looking again i love it when they include uh holsters and sheaths and things like that they keep everything secure so we got the pistol out <clears throat> Uh, kind of the standard um, handgun that we've seen for most of the G.I. Joe releases. Pretty nice. Again, some interesting detail there. So there is the uh, handgun, and that's pretty much all the accessories we get for Mr. Snake Eyes here. Um, I guess we're not going to count his web gear as an accessory. That's just... Uh, but I guess you could. Um... So, uh, as opposed to that uh, silent interlude figure that we got, uh, this time um, it's basically the same figure. They've got some new tooling to show his battle damage on his torso and arms. Uh, but the rest of the figure is basically the same. Again, some very small, subtle changes to a couple of pieces showing these tears. But they've also done this in a... Um, kind of a more gray color uh it was that weird midnight blue color in the last figure so uh this one is more traditional color scheme for snake eyes here it looks really nice i like it a lot it actually works pretty well here um as far as the details go he's got that uh original commando hood face mask with the uh non silverized goggles his traditional web gear with that green grenade on there you can see his arashikagi clan symbol there on his forearm some very nice detail again with the uh, the tearing of his uniform cool texture on his web gear lots of pouches lots of cool stuff going on there uh, kind of the standard Lower body, a couple of pouches, that cool knife sheath, regular kind of combat boots there. Very cool looking though. Nice tread on them. Some cool patterns and everything. More pouches on his side there. Just really a nice figure here. As far as the articulation goes, uh, the head does spin 360 degrees. We get plenty of up and down motion. Side to side, head tilt, everything is good there. Standard uh, ball and swivel at the shoulder joints. Standard ball and swivel at the elbow joints. We do still have that same swivel joint at the wrist. We got the uh, standard kind of chest twist articulation there. Move this arm around a little bit. Ab crunch is in place. The web gear doesn't get in the way. I will note there's like a little scar there on his uh, main upper arm right there, which is very cool. It's pretty easy to overlook because it's real light. but And actually some here on his uh, forearm as well. So that is pretty cool. I hadn't actually noticed that to begin with, but very nice. 
If you uh, move the web gear a little bit, you can see a little bit more of that right there on his chest as well. Very, very interesting. Um, standard metal T-hooks at the waist joints and the hips. Full front motion, about there, back motion, full side to side. We do get standard uh, double knee joint there, standard swivel and rocker at the ankle joint. So, uh, again, it's a really good figure for uh, Snake Eyes. It's the same basic figure we've got from a lot of it, but uh, this time around we actually just get some cool battle damage. So, that's uh, a unique variant i guess you could say it's not really a variant because it's a new release but uh i kind of like it adds a little bit of charm to the character a little bit here so cool though there's a uh, snake eyes Moving on to Storm Shadow here, let's uh, start with his bow and arrow. Uh, so this is a molded open bow with this cool um, bright yellow arrow. <laughs> Some nice detail work all the way around. Uh, I don't know why there's a radar dish on his bow, but there he is. Still very nice looking. So. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, a little crazy, but, uh, you know, what is it? We also get his uh, standard backpack um, and his uh, double swords here. So we've got the longer katana. If I can get it out here, it's kind of stuck in there a little bit. The paint must have uh, dried a little bit there. Uh, but you can see it uh, does go in and out very easily after you get it broken apart the first time does tend to stick out a little bit there at the top, which is a bummer, but let me switch that around a little bit. Nope, still doesn't quite go all the way to the bottom of the base. So anyways, a uh, very nice looking katana. It's the uh, same sword we have seen in other releases here. We do have, if we can get it to focus here, that uh, Arashikagi clan symbol on the blade there. Uh, this one is done in a nice, well, it's an odd kind of sky blue. So, same as the bow there, but uh, kind of interesting. You know what makes it a little bit different anyways. Our uh, smaller short sword here. Uh, I can never get it right with Shabi or something to that effect. Same basic blade design. It does also have that little uh, detail on the blade itself for the Arashikage clan symbol. Some nice wrapping effects there on the hilt as well. Very cool. It also just slides into the uh, backpack like that. It does fit a little bit better. You don't see the exposed blade on that one. Which is odd. Um... The other odd thing about this one is they've uh, colored the uh, the quiver on the ba the pack here. It's that kind of uh, midnight blue that was in the previous release. I don't know why they did that. I would have thought it would have been the same color as like the the hilt of the swords, but you know whatever. Still looks very cool, very interesting. Uh, the actual belt itself has the same details we're used to seeing. They did not paint the buckle on this one. Uh, just a plain sculpting detail, though, but very nice looking. Nice leather punch holes and things like that. So, very cool. And that does just uh, slide over. You uh, generally have to take the head off in order to get it to pop on there, so I'm not going to bother with it right now, but uh, just kind of slides over his shoulder. Uh, another accessory he does have is here in his belt. He's got this cool little dagger here that is removable, which is nice. So, same basic color scheme there, that weird bluish color. 
detail in the hilt, but not in the blade itself. So still very nice though. Uh, the throw in stars don't remove, so you're kind of stuck with them molded on, but I do like having that dagger as removable. That is very cool. And it just slides right in there, like so. Looks very nice, very cool. Um, I'm going to count his cape as his other accessory here. Um, it's a nice cloth cape. It is removable. You just kind of move it around and uh, it pops off his head, but it's a very cool looking cape there. I'm going to stick it back on here for a moment here. Um, pretty cool. It's kind of like a Jedi cape, sort of. But you can kind of fold it around him however you want to. And uh, it's got a nice, rich kind of crimson color. Very cool. Fits very nicely. It does mostly match with uh, the color of his hood underneath there. So that is pretty cool. Again, you can just pop that hood off and uh, you're good to go with the actual standard figure here. So uh, let's go ahead and look at him while we're here. It uses the same basic uh, body shape that we have seen in previous uh, Storm Shadow releases. Uh, he's got some weird coloring issues here on his shoulder. I don't know how well this is going to uh, show up. Let me dial this down a little bit. Um, it kind of looked like it's just paint that's bled in there. So I don't know if that's... Uh, an actual paint effect or if that is um, something else but uh, looking at the cover I don't see anything that uh, kind of hints at that so I don't know so if anybody knows for sure or if it's just this particular figure let me know that but uh, I mean it could be just like blood or something I guess so or meant to be blood not necessarily actual blood just so that you are aware. Uh, but he does have a new head sculpt here with that nice hooded version. I do like that quite a bit. Um, nice face sculpt though, but uh, I, look, I like that hood. Nice folds all the way around. Uh, past the hood, it is the same kind of regular body that we have seen in previous issued figures. Uh, so all the details are basically the same. It is kind of an off-white color this time, so kind of a cream colored. So it's not like dead white like we have seen. So like his his actual face mask is uh, actual white, like bone white. But this is more of a cream color. And he does have the nice kind of crimson highlights on his belt, his forearm wrappings, and his uh, shin guard things there. Uh, of note is also this, uh, they've kind of painted his uh, flip-flops. <laughs> I don't know what you call them, but uh, they haven't traditionally done that, so it's uh, an interesting take on these anyways. Nice little extra detail there. Got a little bit of paint thing going on right there, but uh, not too bad. As far as articulation goes, the head does spin at 360 degrees. Plenty, well, some up and down motion. Mm, a little bit of side head tilt, nothing extravagant. Standard ball and swivel at the shoulder joints. Standard ball and swivel at the elbow joints. We've got the mid forearm swivel there. Standard uh, waist twist, ab crunch. Very cool. Standard metal T-hooks there at the waist and hips. Um, mostly full front motion, mostly good back motion, really good side to side. We do get a double knee joint there, and we get the uh, standard swivel rocker combo there at the ankle joint. So yeah, um, I like the color scheme on this guy, that uh, kind of crimson color and the off-white. Definitely sets it apart from uh, other Storm Shadow figures. And it looks really good, to be honest with you. Once you add his uh, crazy fancy coat here, cape, cow, whatever you want to call it, it uh, definitely adds a lot to this particular figure. And uh, it honestly just works really well. Um, 
I'm gonna pop that back off and see if I can get his uh his weapons attached here. Um, normally, I end up having to pop the head off on this thing, so I'm gonna do that. Slide that over the shoulder, and it's mostly because his shoulders are slightly larger, wider, however you want to look at it there, than uh, some previous figures. So it just makes that little extra little bit there a little harder there. Anyways, uh, snap his head back on here. And you also note that uh, the actual Cobra symbol is on the left. Well, it's on his right side. <laughs> uh, traditionally, it's on the left here underneath so that the, his little uh, thing here basically covers it up a lot of times. But uh, for whatever reason, they put it over on that side. So I don't know, but it's still cool. All right. And we go ahead and uh, slide the cape back on there. It's uh, definitely much more difficult with that on there it does not look nearly as nice so you probably only want to put the uh, the weapons on there when he has taken this off or you can do something like that but uh, it's nice to have an option anyway so um, I do like that quite a bit here it's a really cool snor uh, storm shadow figure so Um, yeah, I'm really digging it. So, uh, this particular set is, uh, again, fairly easy to come by. Uh, it's not really, uh, demanding a lot of, uh, premium price right now or anything like that. So I would actually definitely recommend picking this one up. The Storm Shadow figure, I think is worth it, uh, because it seems like a unique version of the figure. And I really like that. Uh, the Snake Eyes figure is also very cool. I do like the battle damage on him, but um, he just isn't quite as cool as the uh, Storm Shadow figure. So that's my opinion anyways. You can do with that what you will, but uh, again, fairly easy to get these things. So you may want to look at picking them up loose if you don't want both of them, but I like them both. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have for today, so thanks for watching, as always. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, drop some comments down below and let us know what you think of this comic 2-pack featuring uh, Battle Damage, Snake Eyes, and Fancy Cape, Storm Shadow. If there's an actual name for them other than that, you know, let me know that in the comments section as well. But until then, this is uh, Fancy Cape's... Storm Shadow and uh, Battle Damage Snake Eyes, but uh, still really cool, fun, little two-pack. Um, if you'd like to see anything in future episodes, let me know that in the comment section as well. And until next time, yo Joe!